Good afternoon. In this video, I want to show again, again how heretical Jack Smack's gospel, Jack Smack's 97 gospel, false gospel, cursed gospel is. It's not even gospel. They call it the message that leads to salvation, giving of eternal life, as they put it. Because they know what the gospel is, but they put that, they push it into a doctrinal issue. Very clever. So he he left a comment on my page dealing with, uh, and he uses the word Deadwood one two PF one two three. See, see, these heretics all have this this juvenile way of approaching any type of confrontation. They make up little names like the children. He's got the he's got the maturity of a six year old. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. First Corinthians three and four. Yeah. John 3.16 simply tells one how to receive eternal life. Uh, no. It, it gives a promise that whosoever believe in the Son will receive eternal life. But that means you've got to believe the Gospel. Because you've got to know who the Son is. It simply tells one, whosoever believe in, the, uh, believe, uh, believe, in, believe in the Son will have eternal life. It gives a promise that if one believes in the Son, they will have eternal life. But the next question has to come up, who is the Son? Who is the Son? He's going to tell you John 3.16 can save you. It can't, because it doesn't tell you who the Son is. It appears that you don't believe any salvation verse anymore, and just a confused heretic who needs to get a life. Okay? And you got three, three thumbs up on this, people. Three th thumbs up. Now, what a lot of people do is they ignore what he's really saying. They ignore what the Corsos Gospel is saying. They'll say, oh, he's preaching the Gospel. What they've done is change the, change the object of faith. Not from away from the Gospel into promises of eternal life. That is the subtle swift, uh, shift that these guys have done. How important is this? This is from... Uh, Grace and Focus, this is their magazine, the GES magazine. This is dated September and October 2014. So you people all say, I don't know what I'm talking about. This is proclaiming the gospel. But they're not proclaiming the gospel. They're not proclaiming the gospel, people. They're proclaiming a promise, not the gospel. And they'll even tell you what they're proclaiming is not the gospel. And we'll see that in a second by Wilkham. Now, how important is this issue? Here's one from their own writing. Phil Congdon. When it comes to the issue, an issue as critical as the gospel, there cannot be, be, indeed, there must not be any equivocation for the sake of a perception of harmony. Oh, Ed, he's so good on this issue. He's so good on that issue. He's so good on this issue. He must be mocked as a heretic, Jack Smack 77. Wilkin is a heretic. Everybody who believes this lie is a heretic. Anybody who believes you can get saved with a single verse is lying through their teeth because there's no single verse that can give you the gospel in its entirety. Death by resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ. And they'll say, well, see, you only got, you know, all you need to know about how you can get eternal life. And believe that, at the promise. Now you've known the Son. So let's see what Wilkin has to say. What is grace theology? You people who are Jack Smack 77 followers, have you ever seen the article? Are you just following his blabber and lies and deceptions because what 90% of what he'll say is we will we'll, we'll agree with it's the 10% that will kill you so he says free grace uh, theology summarized free grace theology is the view that one everlasting life is a free gift which the Lord Jesus fully paid for by his death on the cross for our sins see how they they fold that in there people they put that, the course, as the basis of giving everlasting life. 
but it's not the object. The cross is not the object of faith. What they've done is what the, what the Old Testament saints would, would be doing. The Old Testament saints did not have the cross as the object of their faith. The content was different. The content would change. After the cross, the cross became the object of faith. They're making it now. They're making the promise that God gives eternal life. And they're saying the cross is the basis of salvation. In the Old Testament, the cross, the, the coming cross, the coming cross resurrection, would be the basis of the Old Testament salvation saints, of the salvation of the Old Testament saints, even though they didn't believe in the details of the cross and resurrection. But it was the basis that God could forgive their sins, cover their sins, and, and send the Abraham's bosom to wait to the historical event of the cross, uh, the cross and resurrection. So, cleverly they worried this, so people who are, have no discernment would think, oh, he's preaching the gospel now. No, he's not. The object of faith has changed. The cross just becomes the basis of salvation. Which is received by faith alone in Christ alone, apart from works of any kind. See, we'd agree with that. See that? See how clever it's worded, people. This is a work of a, of a, of a person who's controlled by a devil. That he could cleverly worry this and, and just twist around where he's changing the object of faith from the cross and resurrection to a faith and a promise. And then just say, well, the basis of the, the, uh, what the, the, the promise of everlasting life, the basis of it is that God is able to give you everlasting life because of the cross. And that was what we, what we believe in the old, from the Old Testament saints. That was their basis of salvation because the, God foresaw the cross coming. And that was how you could cover their sins based on what... So they take an Old Testament truth and bring it into New Testament, even though the cross is right there. And denying what Paul said. It is the gospel that is the power to salvation. That assurance of one's eternal destiny is based solely on believing Jesus' promise to the believer. Jesus' prom Jesus's promise to the believer. And not at all in our works or on our feelings. Well, it's not based on the promise. It's based on the fact of our position. It's not based on the promise, people. It's based on a p position. We're in union with Christ. They're basing eternal security on the wrong issue. Eternal security is not based on a promise. It's based on the fact of a, of a sealing and, and, and being in union with Jesus Christ. That's the basis of eternal security. So they fouled up eternal security and the why we receive eternal security. We don't see it because we believe a promise about eternal security. We receive eternal security because when we believe, we were sealed with the Holy Spirit and put in union with Jesus Christ and we can't get out of that union. That all people, believers and unbelievers, are accountable for their works, receive uh, recompense for what they do in this life and will be judged at the end of the age in two separate judgment. Yeah, we believe that. To determine degrees of reward, believers, or degrees of torment, unbelievers, in the life to come, but not to determine their essential, uh, eternal destinies. We believe that. But he told you two lies in there. Two lies. Grace, free grace theology is the view that everlasting life is a free gift which the Lord Jesus uh, fully paid for by his death on the cross of our sins. It is a free gift. And the basis of is the, uh, uh, the death, burning, resurrection of Jesus Christ. But what he doesn't tell you there. He's omitting something. He's omitting something. He doesn't want to tell you there that the object has changed. It is not the object of faith isn't the cross or the resurrection. And the resurrection. The object of faith is now a promise. He doesn't tell you that. Then. That's what Satan does. He omits. He omits. And then of course here, again. That assurance of one's eternal destiny is based solely on believing Jesus' promise to the believer. No, it's not. The assurance of salvation, uh, the assurance of one's eternal destiny is based solely on believing Jesus' promise to believe. No, 
It's based on our position. Our union with Jesus Christ and the fact that, in fact, Jackson Max 77 quoted, he said, seal with the Holy Spirit and then ignored the fact of where that verse is found. Ephesians 1, 12 and 13 because that's where Paul tells what he preached the Ephesians to get saved. And not all, at all on our works or on our feelings. No, that's true. But it's not based on a promise. It's based on a position. But here we get down, page, again, here's page 27. You know, oh, believe me, I guess I got a bunch of uh, people who thumbed me down in this video. Let's see, uh, six people thumbed me down. See? And, uh, oh, Jack Smack Liar 77 comes up there, Deadwood. He's a little juvenile. Tax, trying to hide what he really believes. They're really trying to hide what they believe. The specific object of saving faith is Jesus' promise of eternal life. Compare John 3.16, John 6.47, John 11.26. These passages all say that whoever believes in Jesus Christ has everlasting life. Go to those passages to see if the, if the name Jesus Christ shows up anywhere in those passages. Go to John 3.16. you see the name Jesus Christ anywhere? You see a son. Go to uh, John, John 16.44-47. Jesus Christ's name isn't mentioned yet. Let's see here. You see how this is salvation by osmosis. John 6.47. What's this on John? 11.26. 11.26. And whosoever liveth and believeth in, this, in, in me shall never... Never die. Believest thou this? And of course, John 11 is not about the resurrection. But does the name Jesus Christ show up on it? You're taking isolated verses, remember, people. According to Jack Smack 77, you're supposed to be saved by a single verse. So let's go to John 6, uh, 6 uh, 26, 647. Let's see if Jesus Christ's name even shows up there. Remember, you're saved by a single verse now. Very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Who's me? You're not allowed to look at the other verses, people. According to Jack Smack, comparing Scripture to Scripture is a heresy when you deal with the Gospel. So he has you, he, this guy, Wilkin, has the object of saving faith, which he doesn't tell you in the free, free, free grace theology summarized. The specific object of saving faith is Jesus' promise of eternal life. He switched the object of faith from the uh, from the cross and resurrection, the substitutionary atonement, and the resurrection, which proved the efficacy of that atonement, to the promise that God gives eternal life. And then he tells you, these passages all say that whoever believes in Jesus Christ has everlasting life. It doesn't say one word of Jesus Christ there. You see the Son, and you see me and me. <laughs> so go tell someone, John 11 26. Or, or, or John 6.47. And the guy would say, well, who's, who's me? Remember, the, the uh, 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 Philip had to be sent to the uh, 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 eunuch because the eunuch had questions about Isaiah 53. Who's speaking here? Well, according to Jack Smack 77, it wouldn't matter who's speaking. Just believe it. <laughs> Just believe it. When we believe that, we believe in Jesus. Well, the name Jesus doesn't show up in any of those verses, people. But this guy is going to tell you that John 3.16 can save you. That John 6.47 can save you. John 11.26 can save you. By themselves, isolated. Uh, while free grace people believe and proclaim the cross and the resurrection, we do not we do not say that all who believe Jesus died for our sins and rose again have eternal life. Okay, why not? Because someone can believe these things about Jesus and also believe in salvation by works. That is not a saving message. See, that's why they're counting it out. They couldn't figure out the fact that the issue is the fact that okay, people could believe in death by resurrection and still not be saved because they haven't believed in, they're not trusting solely in Jesus Christ. In order to have a saving faith, a person must believe that everlasting life, or equivalent ideas like justification, eternal relationship with God, 
guaranteed security with Jesus in his kingdom, or once saved, always saved, is by faith alone in Christ alone apart from works. Yeah, but those passages don't mention Christ. It is not enough to believe that faith in Jesus is, the, is one condition among many. One must believe that faith in Jesus is the only condition of eternal life. Yeah, but those verses don't mention Jesus. <laughs> That's the problem. That's the problem. So, let me see here. We applications of free grace theology. Free grace theology is life transforming. First, by believing the Lord's promise of life, one, one gains everlasting life. See, they believe, well, the gospel isn't enough to save you. Well, it's not enough to save you, because you have to trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior. We know that from Ephesians 1, 12 and 13. But because they can't figure out, they can't, this, see, this, this derives from ignorance. Because they can't answer 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 and why people can believe that and still not be saved, they want to chuck it and say, let's go to something like believing a promise that God gives eternal life. When in fact, what you have to do is say, wait a second, yeah, 1 Corinthians 3 and 4 is the gospel which leads you, is part of the God, which leads you to believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as per, as per Ephesians 1, 12 and 13, which in turn gets you in position of, of Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, which get you sealed. That's where eternal security comes from. You don't get eternal security from believing the promise of eternal security. You get, the, you get eternal security because you believe the gospel and you're saved. Uh, okay. Um, first, by believing the Lord's promise of life, one gains everlasting life, which makes growth and fullness of life possible. There were no... There is no other way to be born again. You see that, people? He just told you that believing the gospel, you can't get saved with believing the gospel. You have to believe the promise that God gives you everlasting life. Now, most of you out there who follow Jackson Max 77 would call me a liar. But that's exactly what his guy says, Wilkin, who he says he follows. By believing the Lord's promise of, of life, one gains everlasting life, which makes growth and fullness of life possible. There was no other, no other way to be born again. He just denied the gospel, the cross, the resurrection. Second, as long as one believes uh, the, etern the promise of eternal li of life, he remains sure of his eternal destiny. There was no other way to be certain of our eternal destiny. Well, once you believe the gospel, the issue is believing, knowing who you believe in. You believe the truth. That's the way you may certain of your eternal destiny. Because you, you, you know who you trusted in. Because of what he did for you on the cross. Which is what John 3.16 is talking about. That God so loves you that he sent his only begotten son to die in your place. And once you believe in him, that can never change. Third, assurance produces love and gratitude, which are powerful motivated, motiv motivators to live for God. Yeah, you, assurance is a powerful motivator. But you have to be really saved. You're not saved. You just believe God gives you a, a promise. You believe in a promise. Fourth, knowing that our quality of life here and now depends on walking by faith is also highly motivated. Yeah. See, now they shifted the issue of the walk. Fifth, knowing that one day the Lord will judge us in the full, fullness of... See, the, what their argument now is, that they, they're arguing uh, the, against the antinomian attack. See? see, once they shift, they get the argument, the promise of eternal life. Now the argument is against the people who accuse, accuse people who believe in eternal security of antinomianism. So most of their literature, again, is fighting against people who accuse uh, people who believe in eternal security of antinomianism. Dealing with the war. Because they don't want you to deal with the fact that they've rejected the gospel as being sufficient for salvation. Which he wrote by he people. He said the only way you can be saved, there was no other way to be certain. Uh, there was no other way to be born again. There was no other way to be born again but by believing the Lord's promise of life. So he's saying, believing the gospel is not a way to be born again. You've got to believe the promise. This is changing the gospel message, people. And he's going to say, 
that this is evolving. This is evolving. Fifth, knowing that one day the Lord will judge us and, and the fullness of our eternal life forever uh, uh, will depend on the outcomes of, of that judgment will move us daily to walk in the light of God's word. Yeah. The judge of the seed of Christ should motivate us to stay in the spirit and walk in that. But we're talking about how you get saved in the first place. See, they want to just shift away from that issue and say, see, when you believe, once you believe John 6, 47, once you believe 316, once you believe 1126, well, where's the name Christ mentioned anywhere? Oh, let's go to Acts 16, 31. Okay, where's, Acts, where's uh, anything mentioned about the cross and resurrection? See, Acts 16.31 matches nicely with 1 Corinthians 3 and 4. See, that is where the, the unity comes in. You have to believe in Lord Jesus Christ. Then they went 16.32, they explained the issue of, of uh, more fully from the Word. But the complement verses, uh, 16.31 complements uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 4. That's true, sure. And, that, and how do we see that? Ephesians 1, 12, and 13, people. Ephesians 1, 12, and 13. Far from being something which pushes uh, people on godliness, see, that's what they, they want to shift to, the issue of antinomianism. Free grace theology derives, uh, derives people to holiness. Free grace theology really works. <laughs> there is a free grace theology, people, but it's not from the grace uh, evangelical society. It is not from the... Uh, uh, you can find us in uh, faithalone.org, the Grace Evangelical Society. Believe in Him for life. Here you got a little thing. Yeah. Believe in Him for life. Who's Him? Who's Him? Conclusion. Eternal life is truly certain and free for all who simply believe in Jesus. Well, those verses don't say anything about believing in Jesus. <laughs> and you're supposed to remember, Jack Smack's whole argument in his book don't, you can't compare scripture to scripture now. You see, they set the guidelines. They say bringing another scripture in is heretical. You're supposed to be able to say, be saved by one verse. And they're saying comparing, comparing scripture to scripture is a heresy. Because other people do it illegitimately and use the wrong scriptures. This is what it's leading to people. They are dogmatic on saying one verse can save you. And then you look at the verses and they say they're not saying what they're, they're, they're claiming to say. It doesn't say anything Acts 16 31. It says about Acts 16, uh, it doesn't say anything about the, uh, uh, the cross, the resurrection. So who's this Lord Jesus Christ? Do you believe me? Why should I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? According to, according to the free, these, these phony free graces, why should you? What did he do for you? John 3.16, who's his son he's talking about? But again, they're the ones that say, no, 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 you, you can't you can't use other scriptures. Most people most people witness like this. I don't know where I'm going when I die. If you have five minutes, I can help you know. Where you're going when you die. See, this is a five minute fast food gospel, fake gospel. It's insanity. Five minutes. They think you can tell somebody how to get saved in five minutes. This is bumper stick, bumper sticker theology. That's what that's what they want you to believe. And you'll think I'm wrong. Because most of you people who follow Jack Smack, you don't believe what he's actually saying. Because he wants to cloud it. He wants to shift back and forth on you. And then he'll come on my to make a comment. You got, you got nothing else to better do? Oh, no, I have nothing better else to do, Jack. Then go after heretics like you. I got plenty of time for that. Heretics don't like being exposed. You notice that, people? How they come back, break it, did it. You know, he, you know, Jim uh, King, uh, Kim did it, did it. John Davis with his newsletters did it. When you go after these guys, they don't like being exposed. Don't you have anything better to do? 
But of course, Jack Smack is always putting up things against Washer and White and, uh, you know, all these other, you know, uh, Carpenter and all these other guys. And rightfully so. They're heretics preaching a false gospel. But they don't want their false gospel preached against. With a message like that, is it any wonder that most people find it hard to witness? That isn't good news, is it? So, according to them, they, you know, you don't have you know time. And we read again. If you have five minutes, I can help you. Uh, I can help you not know where you're going when you die. Most people witness like this. I don't know where uh, I'm going when I die. If you have five minutes, I can help you not know where you're going when you die. I'm going to double talk of that. With a message like that, is there any one that most people find it hard to witness? That isn't good news at all, is it? People who hold to free grace theology truly have good news that they can share with friends, loved ones, and strangers alike. We can say, I know I have eternal life right now, and that I will always have eternal life no matter what. I know I'll spend eternity in God's kingdom. If you have a few minutes, I can show you how you can be sure you have eternal life now and forever. See the issue on assurance and confidence you have eternal life by omitting the cross and the resurrection. Only the free grace position is truly good news. Only when we actually believe in soul fide by faith alone. Only when we accurately proclaim the ramifications of the finished work of Christ. Notice, notice the wording, people. Only when we accurately proclaim the ramifications, not the actual finished work of the cross, but the ramifications of the finished work of Christ on the cross. That is satanic, how he worded that. It's the ramifications, what are the ramifications that God gives eternal life to whoever believes in the Son. Okay? But we're not told to believe in the cross. Because, well, if people believe in the cross and resurrection, but they're not saved. Yeah, because they've been trusting Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, by faith alone. Oh, no, 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 we, we don't need that anymore. We just go by the personal faith. You know, in, uh, the, the confidence in, in the uh, uh, a gospel, uh, in the, uh, the God gives everlasting life, and that's the that comes from that's the ramification of the cross. The ramification that is a curse. Jack Smack is lying. Wilkin is lying. Jane Hodges lied through their teeth, and they are not free graces. There's a free grace movement that has a true gospel. And I've known their works. But there's, as this guy said, and the, the guy who, one of the people who wrote on this, this work here, that I quoted, cited before, there is no way when a person is preaching a false gospel of reconciling Back here. Funny, he's got here in you know, the election for Baptists. There isn't a single verse in the Bible that says God elects individuals for eternal life or for eternal death. So he's looking for a single verse for that. Of course, that'd be uh, on, that'd be unconditional election. An election is for service, not for salvation. Election is a result of salvation. Again, proclaim the gospel. Is there room for diversity? No. When it comes to an issue as critical as the gospel, there cannot be. Indeed, there must not be any equivocation for the sake of a perception of harmony. You go get the get the magazine. You go online. You go his uh, thing online and uh, read the uh, actual online. They have the whole. Well, the last time I checked, they have all the magazine articles. See what Jack Smack seventy seven is trying to sell you, people. When he brings in the gospel, that is the basis of why you can believe in Jesus Christ for eternal life. Because of their ignorance of First Corinthians three and four. Because they didn't understand how people could believe those true facts and still not be saved, they just chucked them, got rid of them, said, well, we're going to go to a promise that God gives eternal life. 
This view comes out of the ignorance of understanding what is necessary to be saved. And why 15, 1 Corinthians 3 and 4 is not a salvation by itself. Because you have to take one step further. You now you have to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Go to Ephesians 1, 12, 13. It's all laid out, people. And your basis of eternal security is not based on a promise. It's based on a position. It's based on a position. And the basis of the, the free grace movement of going to cross this gospel issue, they want to say, well, the cross is the basis for what we can believe in. So we're not denying the cross and resurrection. It's the basis. But that's Old Testament. Old Testament, Old Testament saints can be saved based because of the, the cross coming. And that's what all the sacri sacrifices represent. The coming blood atonement. And they go to John eleven twenty six, 26, John 11 is about the resurrection. Job talked about the resurrection. So they have some idea of a resurrection. And of course, the, they had some a view of, of, of Messiah's coming. And that they just couldn't figure out a suffering Messiah versus a ruling Messiah. And so that would confuse them. But they were, believe, they were waiting for that Messiah. But the fact of the matter is, and look at the verses he quotes, it doesn't even, doesn't even mention the name Jesus Christ. John 3.16 doesn't mention Jesus Christ. Eh? I said somehow you, all you get is five minutes to witness to somebody. That's important as some issue of, of the gospel. You only got five minutes now, people. One o'clock. How long did Philip witness to the eunuch? How long do you think Paul witnessed to the jail and spoke these issues, taught him these issues? Five minutes? You know, it's John, that's Jack Smack's forte. Five minute little sermonettes. That's what he does. He thinks everything boils down to five minutes. You know, I'm gonna. I got five minutes. That's all. <laughs> I'm gone. We gotta hurry up. We gotta hurry up. The free grace, this great, the grace evangelical society is wicked. Oh, they believe so many good things. Oh, they believe in eternal security. Oh, they believe this. Oh, they believe that. They don't believe in true gospel. They don't believe in true gospel because they're ignorant. They're ignorant of 1 Corinthians 3 and 4, which many people are ignorant of 1 Corinthians 3 and 4. Faith works people, ignorant of 1 Corinthians 3 and 4. They're quoted. They don't believe. They don't, they don't understand something part of the gospel. People want to use the sinner's prayer. They don't stand 1 Corinthians 3 and 4. Can't figure out Romans 10, 13, and 14. St. Hodges got that right when he was still orthodox. He got that right. How can we just show you show you exactly he got he, he got first uh Romans 10, 13, 14 right? These guys all want to stop. In the middle of a logical argument, they split the logic. Romans 10, 13, and 14. But JT, my man JT he comes in and he says, Oh, my God, God showed me, you know, this is the head belief is talk to. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to digress here. So let's stop with this up. This is yours, people. These videos are made for the sermons. You want to keep swallowing the lie. I mean, if you look at the Old Testament, people were warned. They didn't want the truth. They rather believe the liars. They rather believe the false prophets. They rather believe the false teachers. Peter said that before false teachers among you. Just as there were false prophets in the Old Testament. Jack, seven, Jack Smack 77 is a false teacher. He's giving you a false gospel. Now, people go after Jack Smack 77 for the wrong reasons. Because he says, once saved, always saved. So, he's often attacked by the, the wrong people. But the right people have to start attacking him, who believe in the true gospel. 
he's getting away with teaching a false gospel by the people who should be rebuking him for the right reasons. It is faith alone, but it's in faith alone in the gospel, the object of faith. Remember he said to you people, the object of faith has changed. The object of faith, they've changed that. And it says you can't be born again without believing the promise. Now you got to believe in the, in the cross. That Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross and rose again from the dead. Physically. That is the Son of God. That is who he... That, that is... John 3, 16 is the Son of God. He doesn't say one word about Jesus Christ there. This is salvation again by osmosis. And you know what the basis of that is? Well, they'll quote the verses that says, well, God will, will not cast out anybody who, who, who uh, diligently seeks him. So you, you claim that one verse and God, God well, okay, I have, to, I have to now save this person because he's, 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 he's believed in that promise. Even though he doesn't know anything about the gospel, I can't cast him away. That's the basis of it. That's the, that's the hidden foundation of that. God will no way to cast out to anybody who, who seeks him. Whoever well, seeks him is going to get the true gospel. Not a little, little text, a little Bible verse. But he's seeking the Lord. And God said he won't, he won't cast anybody out. He'll get, he'll get them the real gospel. If you're seeking the truth, you'll get the true gospel. But if you think you will say it with one verse, you won't. Aren't. So maybe these videos are the people who believe in a single verse. And God is giving you a chance now to get saved. And if you reject that, his responsibility is done. He, 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 he fulfilled that promise. He gave you the true gospel. Two other ways. Okay, you're diligent in seeking me. You believe in John 3.16. You believe in John 11.26. You believe in John 6.47. Uh, now I'm going to get you the true gospel. Reject this lie that that's, those verses save you and get you the true gospel. Oh, no, I don't need the true gospel. I got those verses. And God can't cast me away. No, he can cast you away if you reject the true gospel. But Jack Smack wants you to claim that promise that that thing holds true and that when you get the true gospel, say, no, the object of faith can't be that promise. The object of faith has to be the gospel of your salvation. That's the power unto salvation. You have to believe in that. And that's where we get the record of what the Ephesians were saved by. Not believing in a, a, a promise of eternal life, but believing in those two issues. What Christ did for them, and then trusting Christ, in Christ solely for their salvation. But the deception and the wickedness, the subtlety of Jack Smack 77 is really demonic. Wilkin, of course he's getting this from Wilkin. The fact of a mental disconnect from these guys is, is, is unbelievable. But it's built on things that you once you study what they're saying, you can see where they're coming from. Because they come from ignorance of how to explain, ex they can't explain why people are lost in 1 Corinthians 3 and 4. Most of these heresies come from ignorance, because they can't explain something. Ruckman's heresy came from the fact he couldn't, he couldn't explain eternal security from certain verses. And so he said, well, those, verses, those people can't all be wrong who deny eternal security using those verses, so what? You know what I'll do? I'll just say there's no eternal security in the Old Testament. That's what came from ignorance. These guys are so arrogant because they think they can't answer a question. They throw out the, the truth and then change the whole theology. So, Ruckman's the theology of a faith work system in the Old Testament is all based on the fact that, well, we can't answer James to, uh, you know, justification by works. And so, uh, clearly that's a work. And so, uh, you know, uh, Abraham, even though he's saved by faith alone, his, his faith wasn't, wasn't perfected and... And it was a foreseen faith, uh, you know, work that was, uh, you know, uh, that he was justified for. And, and now we've gotten the whole thing, a whole school of thought with these guys are so moving away from even the basis where Ruckman said that these people in Abraham said that these people in Abraham's bosom were saved. These people are saying, oh, no, they won't even save. Moses talked face to face with God. These guys are telling you they won't even save. 
Moses, he talks face to face with God. Did any man ever talk face to face with God? Live. Enoch walked with God. No, he wasn't saved. <laughs> Nothing happened to these Old Testament saints. They weren't saved. Abraham, you know, friend of God. Moses, a friend of God. David, a friend of God. Job, see my see my servant Job. <laughs> You're lunatics. We've gone to a lunatic uh, stage with these theologies. But they all, all these guys who advocate these things, the Corsus Gospel liars, the worship salvation liars like Brian Dengler uh, and uh, you know his cohorts, or the faith works system guys like uh, you know uh, Robert Breaker and uh, uh, John Davis and Sluder, Gene Kim, They've all gone into a, 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 a system of, of, of lying that takes on a, a whole new view of reality from the scriptures. Isolating verses and ignoring context, twisting words, ignoring uh, the, uh, the idea that English words can have a narrow meaning and a broader meaning. Any words can. Greek or Hebrew and English. So we stop with this up. Any questions? Tell me all people. No, I, you know what you're talking about. Jack Smack is a wonderful guy. With his five minute little I, I, I'm, this, this sermon today will be. And this sermon, five minutes. Why James White is going to hell? Why John Long Wash is going to hell? Hey, don't you want me to have time to talk about anything else? <laughs> Why spend forty minutes talking about it? How long are you talk about it? Deadwood. Oh, what? That was genius. For a guy who knows, uses five syllable words, you think he's some couple of witty. But from no writing, people, there's no way of unity with these people. You gotta mark them. You have to mark them. And no, uh, 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 show with the line. Let me see here. Uh, the thing that says it's evolving. Let's try it here. So the gospel is evolving. That it marked. But he says, when we say, clean the gospel, the move of diversity, we read here, show you here. Let there be no wavering in, the, in, in those who preach the gospel of salvation by grace through faith alone in Christ alone, who state that on the basis of Christ's death and resurrection, the new believer can know from the moment of faith on that he, on that he is a child of God. Confusion over the gospel is rampant in churches today. The new believer can know from the moment of faith on that. Yeah, that's the gospel. That's not the promise that God gives us eternal life. Let me go back here. Let them be no wavering in those who preach the gospel of salvation by grace through faith alone, in Christ alone, who state that on the basis of Christ's death and resurrection, the new believer can know from the moment of faith on that, the gospel. He is a child of God. Confusion of the gospel is rampant in churches today. As is evident from the results of a study noted above, the gospel of salvation through faith alone in Christ alone has been lost in many, to many churches. Let us clearly proclaim, proclaim the gospel of God's grace and on the basis of his free gift and on the basis of his free gift of salvation. Motivate believers to live lives dedicated to Jesus Christ. Well now he's shifted basically to the idea that the, uh, the, uh, the promise of free gift of eternal life motivate believers to live lives dedicated to uh, salvation. He says here, uh, 
Now, as this new century begins, it is the most basic issue, the one we always look, uh, took for granted, which has come to the fore. After, uh, for, after centuries in lying dormant, uh, in dormant tension, the issue of the gospel message itself has reached our doorstep. If we do not respond, future generations will pay the price. There was a maximum of theological matters, and essentials unity, and not essentials diversity. That means that while we may allow for differences in areas of doctrine, which, while important, are secondary, not integral to the faith, we must take firm stands in areas of doctrine which are foundational. While the question of what is essential is sometimes debated, it certainly is not here. All agree the gospel issue is critical. Do we seek peace? Certainly. Do we value unity and cooperation? Certainly. But not at the expense of truth. And uh, at this, uh, for this we must be vigilant. Vigilant. It was Martin Luther who said, peace if possible, but truth at any rate. But according here, he says, uh, the, uh, let there be no wavering of those who preach the gospel of salvation by grace through faith in, alone in Christ, alone who state that on the basis of Christ's death and resurrection, the new believer can know that from a moment of faith, that he is, that he can know from the moment of faith on that. Well, that's not the promise. He's saying that you believe on Jesus Christ, that he's a child of God. See, they're even confusing and own wording, people. They're even confusing and own wording. Uh, there's a thing in here that talks about the involvement. The involvement. Okay, let's see. Although free grace theology goes back to the Lord Jesus and to his apostles, and it was certainly evident in the 17th century through 19th centuries as well, and he needs to mention some names here, it has really taken shape in the last 35 years. The Gospel on the Siege by Zane Hodges came out in 1981, and it helped to define some of the major issues. But even today, there's still more work to be done. Even today, there's still more work to be done to nail down all the particulars of free grace theology. So, but these guys are saying there's no one know how to get saved for, for 2,000 years. <laughs> the gospel was never taught as that the idea that you've got to just believe in the promise that God gives eternal life to the believers in the Son. The gospel always was the gospel was. The power of salvation to those who believe in Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior because what he did for you on the cross and rose again from the dead, which proved that the cross was efficacious and that he was the Son of God. Is that, is that too complicated? See, that, what, what, what uh, Jack Smack wants you to give is he wants to be able to just rattle off five minutes. That's all I have today. And then he says, Look, where I'm off. <laughs> But even that, he's like the guy wrote in it from, from Texas, the guy in the article there, he says, on that, what on that? On the death by resurrection? Yeah, I really agree with that. I don't think they even know what they believe, <laughs> these guys. <laughs> what, what, what do they believe? Well, Wilkins not preaching that. Wilkins says very clearly, the object of faith has changed. And your eternal security is not based on a promise, eternal security people. It's based on a position. So they got that fouled up too. Old Testament saints were saved on the basis that the cross was coming. The Father, not that they knew the particulars. See, they were going to say, oh, you people are saying that they, they, you know, they saw the cross coming and and, uh, you know, and uh, they were looking forward to the cross, but they didn't know about the cross, and they didn't even believe in the cross, and they go back to the apostles, of course, and other, other, you know, other people in there. Well, we agree the content, and when now they come back and say, well, what content did they have? They, you know, you didn't know the content. It doesn't matter what the content was. We know the basis of salvation was the cross and the resurrection. It was always the uh, basis of salvation. 
going back to Genesis 3.15. It was always the basis of, of their salvation. Whatever God asked them to believe. The basis of salvation was the cross, but post-cross, when the cross is clearly, clearly evident now as being the issue of salvation, as shown by Paul in Acts 13.39, Ephesians 1, 12 and 13, Acts, 30, Acts 16, 31, compared with 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Now we know you can't go the idea, well, well we're going to believe like Old Testament saints believe. We don't need the content, it's just eternal life. Believe in eternal life. So we can, we can just make that cross the basis of salvation like it was in the Old Testament. It was done in the Old Testament, wasn't it? Why can't we do it in the New Testament? Because now it's an historical fact. <laughs> and now it's very clear. Now you've got to believe it. The, the clear details of the course, because we see them now. They're, they're facts. They're histor historical facts. Can't be denied. And so now God makes the requirement. It was always the the the, uh, the the method of being saved was always faith alone. And why he talks about this in his dispensation work, you know, the, the content would change. But the basis was always the course. God foreseen the course on the basis of that. He could cover the sins and forgive them. But see, when you see in Romans 4 with David, he's talking about covering the sins. He doesn't say removing them. That doesn't come to the course. So when these guys in the faith work system come up and they, they tell you, oh, David, you know, show mercies of David. And David, see, that's who he's really talking about. That's an illustration of New Testament salvation. And David's not talking about himself. It's not an illustration of New Testament salvation. Because our sins aren't covered when we believe. Our sins have, have actually been removed at the cross. All we're doing is believing that. So again, I'll stop and put this up. Amen. Thank you.